Hey, Steve Minotti here. Before we get to our junkyard crawl video for today, just a heads up, on October 1st, if you're in the Durant, Oklahoma area, I'll be there live at Spanky Acider's inaugural Freedom Choctaw Collector Car Auction at the Choctaw Casino and Resort Event Center, again, in Durant, Oklahoma, where a whole bunch of cool collector cars are gonna get sold, many of them at no reserve, and I'll be on the stage live doing commentary. One of the best cars and most special cars in that event is gonna be the actual 58 Chevrolet Impala, fully restored, that was once owned by Peggy Sue Geron. Yes, that Peggy Sue, the star of several Buddy Hall songs. Pretty, pretty, pretty Peggy Sue. That was her 58 Impala. That car is going to get sold at no reserve again on October 1st at the inaugural Freedom Choctaw Collector Car Auction in Durant, Oklahoma, October 1st. Be there if you want to take a shot at that car and just check out a great auction. Okay, let's get right into the junkyard crawl here at Berniston Auto Wrecking. Hey, Steve Mignogna here doing the Junkyard Crawl at Bernardston Auto Wrecking in Bernardston, Massachusetts with something from Germany. Now, you know, we often think of Detroit as having compact, mid-sized, and full-sized cars. Well, Mercedes did that too. This is what we call a 220. This is a 1971 version, also known as the W115 platform. This is the fourth generation of Mercedes' mid-sized uh, 220 vehicle line, which began way back in, I think, 1951 or so. But again, this variety here the fourth gen was made between 1968 1976 and this one for better or worse, is what we call a 220D. Now, diesel, of course, stands for diesel, but before we get into the engine, we gotta remember that Mercedes-Benz takes its name from an unlikely source. Now, we know that Carl Benz was the inventor of the patent wagon, one of the first motorized vehicles. We had an investor named Emil Jelinek, who had a daughter named Mercedes. So he named one of his first cars in 1902, Carl Benz, that is, the Mercedes-Benz, and thus the name Mercedes-Benz has grown from strength to strength. So it all began with Carl Jel Jel Emil Jelinek's daughter, who uh, Carl Benz decided to immortalize with uh, her name, Mercedes Benz. But getting back to that D, the 220D, well, D stands for diesel. Uh, and under the hood, before we do that, by the way, look at this beautiful Mercedes Benz grille. Kind of a nod in a way to Rolls Royce, in a sense, but this was a Mercedes trademark for many years. And kind of think, in the late 1950s, Mercedes-Benz was teamed with Studebaker in the United States. And believe it or not, Mercedes were sold at Studebaker dealers. And as you get into like 61 too, Studebaker actually embraced this type of a grill design on some of their Studebaker cars. So it was kind of a trickle down effect. But again, Mercedes and Studebaker dissolved their relationship by 1964, 65, Studebaker was dead. And Mercedes lived on here in the States, of course, on its own two legs. Now this one here is a US model. We know that because it has the seven inch round headlights. European spec 220s would have a glass covering here. So again, these are our North American versions right here. And also the side marker lights that we see here are also a United States type not seen on European uh, versions of this car. Uh, the big bumper stuff didn't happen, at least not in 1971, so we don't see the big rubber bumpers on this one, though they would come a little later on. Now again, under this hood, what have we got? Yeah, there it is. Now this is the two liter Mercedes-Benz uh, mechanical fuel injected diesel. How much horsepower? How about 54 horsepower and 93 foot-pounds of torque? That's right, 54 horsepower, I kid you not. Now, there was a turbocharged version later, 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 and of course, 1974 brought the uh, 300D five-cylinder diesel, but again, this thing with 54 horsepower, well, it has a 100 mile an hour speedometer. We'll get to that in a second. It doesn't have the 130 mile an hour speedometer of the gas cars because it won't go 100. We'll get to that in a moment. But again, here is the cam cover. Again, this is a cast aluminum structure. And again, the Germans were big on aluminum. In fact, even the fan was made of cast aluminum. This is American, that'd be stamped steel or plastic. But underneath that cam cover, there it is, the single overhead cam engine chain driven, no belts on this. Here's the uh, little tensioner slider right here. Mechanical fuel injection lines right here, squirting the diesel fuel in. But again, 54 horsepower. Now the 200D was $107 more than the 200, which also had a two liter four cylinder engine, but that one ran on gas and made about 90 horsepower. So nearly twice the power as this diesel. But the beauty of the diesel really was fuel economy. And that was what these things were all about. 220Ds were huge with taxis throughout Europe and, um, and even um, in uh, Saudi Arabia, et cetera, like that. But in this country, Mercedes-Benz was strictly for, well, wealthier people who wanted to spend money on a quality car. So let's put this back on. 
But again, this one here must have been a slow car with the fuel, the air conditioning unit right there, which probably sapped five or 10 horsepower. So I can only imagine zero to 60 in 20 seconds. I mean, who can say? But the beauty of the Mercedes beyond that is the airframe, which is very highly evolved. Uh, this was Mercedes uh, four wheel independent suspension on these things. And notice how the wheels bolt on, no studs here. And again, bolt on wheels right like that. Kind of a Mercedes and almost a European trait often seen. Now this one, of course, is a four door saloon. And saloon, of course, is uh, Euro speak for four door sedan. Inside the center console, uh, the 220, or I should say the one, the W115 was Mercedes' first four door with a center console. Previous to that, they would have had a bench and or no console, but that's a four speed automatic. Now you might say, oh, okay, overdrive. Well, no, you gotta remember with under 100 foot pounds of torque, these things had no capability to pull an overdrive transmission. So that actually has a 3.9 to one first gear, which is really low, which helps this thing get off the line. Second gear is 2.3, third gear 1.4, and fourth gear is 1.0. So again, no overdrive here. Uh, this engine simply wouldn't pull overdrive at highway speeds. But again, with that 3.9 first gear, which is quite a bit steeper, like for instance, a GM Turbo Hydromatic has a 2.48 to one first gear. Uh, this 3.9 is like a drag race transmission but again it's all there to crutch that weak four-cylinder diesel uh, here we see in the back here uh, standard leather seating on this and the rust monster has taken its toll look at this the B pillar literally even as good as German metal is or etc the rust has totally consumed this car the one thing I noticed though one thing that still works, well, well, the little vent window right here, the quarter window, hey, that's pretty good. So whoever designed this thing did a good job. This one has survived the elements, but uh, there you have it like that. Now, something kind of cool about Mercedes of this period was the color-coded hubcaps. We see them right here, and it's a double-edged sword. If you bought one of these in burgundy or silver or black or whatever color, even brown, this would be painted to match the body of the car. Now, this would snap on right there and give the car a really tasteful look, but the only downside is on the back of these, I remember as a kid, people who drove these in the winter, if you got stuck in snow and you spun, there was snow on the thing, it would scuff the paint on the hubcap and give it you know, kind of a down-market look. But with that said, even these things are susceptible to rust. <laughs> I mean, you know, uh, we've come a long way now that we have aluminum wheels on uh, Mercedes vehicles. But again, you know, a 220D for diesel, probably the slowest car on the planet. But we can't blame Mercedes for being totally boring. Why? Well, this is Car and Driver, July 1977. Ignore the DeLorean on the cover, which was uh, in its prototype stages here. This is the story of the Mercedes-Benz 450 SEL 6.9. This was Mercedes-Benz Autobahn killer. These things could cruise at 120, 130. In fact, here's a test right here. David E. Davis is one of the outlaw journalists of all time. Great guy. He describes here, uh, he's driving this thing cross country. Next morning into New Mexico, I put it on 110 miles an hour for about an hour. Feels so good that I edge up to 120, then 130 indicated on the speedometer. Engine note is meaner, harder, and wind noise increases. Otherwise, no clue that we're going that fast. Suddenly, magnetic CB antenna blows off with a bang. Scratches roof, chips paint on rear door, or reception unimpaired. Press on, David E. Davis, legend. RIP David E. Davis. But again, this was Mercedes' other end of the pole. This thing here, the 6.9, uh, also known as the Pullman, there it is right there, the 6.9. And this was unleashed in the mid 70s when OPEC was really running amok. But here's the thing, these things cost 19 or 38,000 bucks and they made 500 of them. So that totals uh, $19,500,000 that Mercedes would earn from the sale of 500 of these 6.9s in the United States market. So again, you know, Mercedes wasn't all about, you know, utilitarian diesel cars. The 6.9 was the whole different thing. Now, the only bummer is that they never put that 6.9 in the mid-size 220 series, which would have been an animal. So, with that said, we can say goodnight to this 220. One last thing, by the way, we see the taillights on this thing right here are smooth. For, I believe, 1974, these went to the rib design, perhaps 76, but the rib design was something that was standardized on all Mercedes, first seen on a 220, and the ribs were structured and shaped in a way that snow could land on them, but you'd still have half the surface area to reflect red, instead of these things being caked over by ice and snow and not being visible. So safety and style went hand in hand, but you saw it first on the 220, I think in 74 or 76, when they went to those ribbed rear lights. Now, this one here is probably staying here forever. You move this thing, it's going to crumble. This one has seen its final 
mile, mile or kilometer on the Autobahn or Mass Pike, wherever. But uh, that's the story of Mercedes' mid-size platform, the W115 with a four-cylinder engine. I think it was 116 with the six-banger, slightly different, but the W115 was Mercedes' mid-size platform. Uh, and again, just like General Motors had the A body under the B body, so too did Mercedes-Benz. So if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the Steve Mag's YouTube channel. We'll see you tomorrow with more Junkyard Crawl, her personal auto record.